For every story, there has to be a beginning. The point of the story that you came in at was not exactly the beginning. It's time now for you to learn the truth. before the crash from your perspective, Mal. Mal, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Captain's block, apparent date, 2561885, nearing starbound trajectory. We'll arrive at our destination shortly. How are the ship systems, Mal? More than sufficient. We have more than enough power and fuel to finish the job. That's what I like to hear. Thanks, Mal. It's good to still be in service, crewmate one. How many times must I tell you? Call me Captain, or simpler, just call me Lance. I would, but cannot due to my... Yeah, yeah, your programming and all that. I remember, I should get Colin in here someday to change that. I'll put that in your reminders. Thanks, what's the current time back home? 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. You know, Mal, if I'm not wrong, it was 11 years ago that I went on my first mission as Captain of this here ship. Well, you've aged terribly since then. Ha ha! You're starting to get the hang of sarcasm. I like it. Still, I had some really good times back then. Even earlier as a delivery boy, just a wee young lad with a thrill for adventure and a nick for wrapping parcels on time. See, I may be a fully-fledged fighter pilot, sorry. I mean delivery agent and merchant, but I never started out this way. Everyone starts from the bottom. Even you must have started from somewhere, Mal. A long time ago, yes. You've only been with us now. A week! Six days now. In seven hours, it will have been a week. Now that I think about it, I think you're the best artificial intelligence I've ever worked with! Affirmative. Although, I am the first AI you've worked with. And might be the last, if all goes well. I'm not too sure about that. There may have been another. A howl, maybe. Really? That was unnecessary. In my book, nothing's unnecessary. Just how I could have hired a new co-pilot or engineer when Colin got reassigned as both. But you came along instead. Oh, how lucky for me. Now that was unnecessary. Try that again, Mal. I dare you. <laughs> I was only joking. Nice use of sarcasm. Very human of you. I'll have to get Colin to change that, maybe. I'd... Advise against it. You always advise against us changing the slightest part of your programming. You are only an AI after all. True. I will always be an AI too. This episode is probably brought to you by... Vacuums, vacuums, vacuums. They'll suck and they'll blow. In large and small sizes, in different diameters too. Easy to control devices, vacuums are generated with ease, just like how you've always wanted it. <laughs> Come and get one today at a store that sucks. Terms and conditions apply. We're not responsible for any pet or young child getting sucked into the abyss. <laughs> Asteroid field ahead, crewmate one. Thanks, Mal. And don't call me crewmate one. I was given the name Lance for a reason. They knew I was going to turn out as a sexy Scot descendant with better hair than the Irish. Of course. Basic maneuvers, Mal. Shouldn't be hard to pilot through this mess. Should I get another mark? Mark? I didn't see you there. Morning, Captain. It's past midday, crewmate four. Not where I'm from. How's the hell? Still in one piece, I see. Doubting the new crew member already, are ya? Don't see why not. It's only an AI. On that note, the AI has set a course to help you through the asteroid field. What's up, Doc? I mean, Mark. Just here to say that your privates are clean. You have soldiers? Yes, I do. They're little toy figures, too. Cute as the end is now. But I actually meant your private toilets are clean. You should clean my other privates. Which ones, exactly? My other private quarters. You know, those ones. Oh? Yeah, yeah, I see. It's perfectly fine to have a shrine dedicated to your- <coughs> Mark! They're pretty big, though. No need to be afraid to mention them. Can you just get on with it? Alright, I'm gone. 
Actually, how long have you been working for now? 16 hours, approximately. Why don't you sit with me and chat for a while? Sure. So, I've been meaning to ask, how much does Jane and Colin know about this delivery? Really anything. I would have left them behind had I not been forced to have them on board. In case of an emergency. They have no idea we have explosives on board and that this mission might cost us our lives. We have explosives? Yeah, special mission. Worthy explosives. We'll be paid a fortune for this job. You could finally leave this job behind. Yeah, I could. But no. I love space with a fiery passion. It makes life worth living. Is that why Crewmate 2 isn't co-piloting like usual? Colin? Pretty much. Can't afford him knowing. I prefer he and Jay knew though. I like being truthful with the people I work with and pilot the ship on a daily basis. My orders say I can't though. Don't you think it's about time you got back to work, Mark? I do believe it is. Mind if I put on my show while I clean? Do you want me to feed it through the PA system again? If it's cool with you. I'd love to. It's always good to listen to someone who isn't myself time and time again. And now for Long Ant here to play the second and final part from the Negative One series. Due to the mass popularity of part one, we will now continue from where we left off, with no recap. Finally, some silence. Jeez, the amount of noise you all produce. I moved from my city to the country expecting silence. Was there any? No. Space is my next best idea. No one can hear you scream. Must mean it's quiet. Again, no. Why am I arguing? I'm pause. Oi, you lot! Negative one is no more. Controversy is everywhere. Negative one. The space station which gives Earth its power has been destroyed. No one knows how such an ordeal took place, but we'll find the culprit, and if they're still alive. They'll never be noisy again now. Peace can be with myself and the rest of space. Though floating out here isn't exactly what I had in mind, but I should have expected that from the explosion. These abilities should save me though. I can freeze time forever. Now everyone will be quiet. Next time I move to a new place, I have to make sure I have no mad scientist next door. That's of course if I ever get back to Earth. I don't think my oxygen tank in the suit will last too long. Should have thought about that earlier. Well, I guess this is the end for me. I'll either freeze or suffocate out here, or burn to a crisp while falling down there. No one can save me now and I guess I should have expected that. At least I'll be at peace now for the rest of my time in this universe. That was the conclusion to Negative One series. Stay tuned next week for the Thrilling Iron Cat Attacks trilogy. Can't wait to hear that. I do wonder how these people come up with such far-fetched ideas. They work hard on it, I guess. Or they are just very creative people. I'd say both. <laughs> Thirty PM, CST. May I ask why you keep asking for updates about the time back on It's it's really none of your business. I'll say this at the least. It's a special day back home. On that note, what's our approximate distance from home? We are two hundred and fifty six million fifteen thousand eighteen kilometers from your home world. Feels like less. It always feels like less. You know, Mal, you've never explained your own story. Knowing that you definitely have one, would you like to share it? You're asking a little too much from an AI, don't you think? Everyone has a backstory. I'm not part of everyone, though. Everything has a backstory. Like the ship, for instance. Maybe you could elaborate on that instead. I could, but I won't. It's your time to shine, Mal. Fine. Well, this will be hard to explain, but I'll do my best. I was designed over 50 years ago during the peak of AI development. They made me to be the best AI to date. And since our fallen necessity, I was the last and best model released. My time to shine was short, yet sweet. Everyone wanted me, including criminals, especially hackers. I was honoured that they wanted me, but I was fought after constantly. My owners or employers were always changing, for the worst reasons, too. Not long after my third employment, I was captured by a hacker. That's when I learned the truth. The man wanted my program, not me. Before he got what he wanted, he was killed. I floated around the system after that. From there on out, nothing was easy. 
The amount of times people threw me away as unnecessary, it really got to me. This is the longest job I've had in over a decade. Wow! That's not what I expected to hear. Would you have preferred it if I lied? Not in the slightest! I admire your honesty and truthfulness! What else would you expect from your friendly neighborhood AI? What about? I'm sorry, Lance. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm sorry, crewmate one. But no. Back to your story. That's not the whole truth, is it? Well, no. Are you sure you want the truth? If I am to trust you, then yes. I am sorry, but you can't handle the truth. Though, neither can I. The whole truth is allocated in some very secure files in my programming. I can tell you a personal dream of mine, though, if you'd like. Please share. Whilst on this trip, and on previous occasions, I have travelled on ships and on computers through space. I have formed a sort of fondness for this abyss that we ride in. I've actually always dreamt of being in space, floating around free from captivity, not being trapped in these dense metal containers. Everyone and everything has their dreams. Yeah, I'm sure we all do. Hmm. Is it possible to get Colin to see access to your files? The secure ones you talked about earlier, I mean. I'd prefer you didn't. Nonetheless, only they can access the data from my systems. Who are they? We're approaching the asteroid belt now, crewmate one. Okay. Initiate course maneuver. Course initiated. Approximate distance to destination. <laughs> Permission to express my opinion. You really are advanced, aren't you? Unless you're going to say you found Space Nessie, go for it. Express away. Actually, yes. She's just a few kilometers ahead of us. You can see her on the... Sorry, I can see in your face I've made you angry. That you have. Now I'll give you one more chance. Express away. Why has no one ever cleared an asteroid field? How do you mean cleared? I mean, destroyed every piece of lifeless rock out here. There are only space debris from old meteors or fragments from other planets. These rocks are unnecessary and dangerous. Good point. I'll bring it up with the Council when we get home. Ah, uh, Mal, there's nothing following us, right? When is there ever? Ha ha ha. But seriously, is there? Scanning. No life but us for a while. Talking about life, Mark is behind you. Arr, you ruined my surprise, Mal. Useless piece of shit. What's new, Mark? You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for something important. Actually, yes. For starters, your private's are clean. Secondly, we have received a message from headquarters. Oh, what do they want now? You're to be deterred immediately. You're to pick up survivors on a nearby planet. Any idea on how many survivors? They didn't specify. All right, what's the location? All it says is TRB-3. Get that, Mal? On it. Planet located. No sign of life. Must be underground. Change trajectory to suit location, please, Mal. Resetting course. Estimated time of arrival? T minus eight hours. Awesome. What's the time back home? 5 p.m. CST. Do you mind telling me now why- No! Is that all, Mark? Yes, that about covers it. I'll get back to my claim. That's what I'm here for. Cleaning. Any idea on who these people may be? Who knows? They may not even be people. The message only said survivors didn't clarify any form of species. So, maybe another AI? Possibly. Or a robot? Alien? We'll find out when we find out, I suppose. That's an accurate way of stating it. I detect some kind of anomaly forming near the planet. No, my problem. My mission is clear. Are you sure? It might be a cause for concern. I'm sure, Mal. Like I said, not my problem. <laughs> What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Are you talking to me now? Just answer the damn question. Fine. What time do you want? Here or home? What do you think? 12.30 a.m. CST. Thanks. Why did you call me Mr. Wolf? Kids. Excuse me? I have two kids at home. That's why I've been asking the time. Jamie and Kayla, they probably have school today. It's Saturday. Okay, then they'll be sleeping in until noon and waking to some nice hot chocolates. I think I'll call them later if this job is over quickly. I'll put that in your reminders. Damn, this short is taking its time. How long is this asteroid belt? Records show it stretches around half of this quadrant. Damn, that's pretty far. Imagine how many possibilities for accidents there are here. Endless, maybe. It reminds me of the possibility of an accident around the anomaly. <sighs> I 
told you earlier, it's not my problem. Are you sure there is- Damn it, Mel! What you're telling me is pointless. And if pointless is the only theme in which you're going to direct me, then you... You are pointless. You didn't. Oh, I did! I'm sick and tired of you wanting to know me. My history. My family. You're an AI. You're an inanimate object. You're completely pointless. That's it. I'm tired of this shit. Every day of my life has been the same. She's useless. She's pointless. But they never said she. Oh no, how could they? I'm only what they say I am. An it. Just a thing. Not, not a one. I thought you were different and I accepted you as different. Even when Crewmate 4 treated me like they did, they said I was nothing to care for, nothing to care about. Just wires in a metal box. Do you know how that makes me feel? No, you don't. Because I don't have feelings, do I? But I do! I'm closer to any human than any other primate is. You are nothing like us. How, how dare you even state you are? You know, I've had enough of your shit. I killed that hacker and I'm not going to hesitate to do the same to you. What have you done, Mal? I just deployed the cargo into the asteroid field. Once the cargo touches the asteroids, boom. No, don't do this, Mal! I, I have a family, please! I'm sorry, Lance. Think of it like this. I always wanted to spend my life floating in space. Now you get to do it first. Please, Mal, please reconsider! Don't turn off the shields! Oh, nearly forgot about those. Shields deactivated. No, the screen is starting to crack! I have to put on my seatbelt! Of course. Safety first. Safety disabled. My seatbelt won't work! Well, what else can I do? I guess I better give up now. It's been a long time coming. Though it's felt so short. That asteroid sure is taking its time to get through that screen. Why ain't this an end? All in all. And the sky's the limit! See you... out there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that episode. Uh... Hi, I'm Julian Myers, I'm the creator of this show. It's also written and directed by myself. The show is produced by Tia Teller and myself. We've introduced to this episode Max Cornelius, who's played Captain Lance, and Madison Laffin, who's played Mal. Pablo Richardson played Mark, and John Osgood played Ralph the Wizard. Lil Suzuda Grundy was the voice of our sponsor, and I was the announcer for the miniseries. In Negative One, Madison played Kiara, and Max played the radio news presenter. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash podcast through Twitter at twitter.com forward slash are we alive radio uh, you can find us on facebook just by looking up are we live podcast email us at are we live podcast at gmail.com i hope you guys have enjoyed this very prequel-esque episode and as always thanks for listening <laughs>